Whatever happened to OJ Mayo? Let's get into this. OJ Mayo was drafted third overall in the 2008 draft to the Memphis Grizzlies with really high upside. OJ Mayo in high school and college was an absolute phenom and he was getting praise from every single scout saying that he was the top prospect in the draft. His great shooting ability compared with his great driving ability and great handles just made him an unstoppable scorer at the time. His high school highlight tape was absolutely incredible and also in college he flashed his amazing scoring ability. OJ Mayo was originally drafted by the Timberwolves but it was traded to the Memphis Grizzlies when he was picked third overall. The Grizzlies were really excited to bring such a talented guy like OJ Mayo into that organization. The Grizzlies were excited to pair OJ with guys like Mike Conley, Marcus Saul, and Rudy Gay at the time. Out of the gate in his rookie season, OJ Mayo came out swinging, averaging a great 18.5 points per game, 3.8 rebounds per game, and 3.2 assists per game on 43% shooting. At the time, the Grizzlies weren't winning, but they were building the foundation with OJ Mayo, Marcus Saul, Mike Conley, like Rudy Gay and all those young guys they had. In his rookie season, OJ Mayo was living up to the hype, putting up amazing numbers, as I said. That rookie season ended up being his best season in the NBA, where he saw his numbers drop off slightly in the next season down to 17.5 points per game. It wasn't really a big deal, his points only dropped off by one point per game, and he was still seen as an amazing scorer in the league. But in his third season, there was a huge drop off in production, all the way down to 11.3 points per game, and he was also playing a lot less minutes and taking a step back. The main reason was the emergence of guys like Mike Conley, Marcus Hall, and Rudy Gay, and they wanted to have OJ Mayo come off the bench in kind of like a Manu Ginobili type role and just a scorer off the bench. But OJ Mayo wasn't really happy with his role. In the next two seasons, he averaged around the same amount of points, 12 points per game, and eventually the Memphis Grizzlies ended up just moving on from him. What started out as such a great career for OJ Mayo, averaging a crazy 18 points per game in his rookie season, and he would have won Rookie of the Year if D Rose wasn't just insane and became the MVP that season, kind of turned into a pretty rough go for him with the Grizzlies after he ended up getting rated. But now OJ Mayo was on a new leaf and on a new team. He went to the Dallas Mavericks where he played all 82 games and saw his minutes increase all the way back up to 35 minutes per game and his numbers also started to increase averaging 15 points per game again. Mayo was thriving with the Maverick but there was one big issue that was coming up time and time again. He had a pretty big drug issue and after just one season with the Mavericks he ended up moving on and going to the Bucks. With Milwaukee his numbers went down back again around to 10 points per game and his career was kind of falling off a cliff at that point all the way from up top where he was almost the rookie of the year averaging 18 points per game all the way down to what he was at now and after spending three seasons with the milwaukee bucks on not great production oj mayo was finally kicked out of the league for two years due to drug abuse mayo is a perfect example of a guy who had all the talent in the world but could just never get it over his drug addiction and could never really focus on basketball and get better it's just a real reminder that talent alone doesn't get you anywhere or much of anywhere you really have to work hard and be all in on basketball if you want to be a great player in the NBA after Mayo's brief career especially for being a third overall pick Mayo ended up going overseas and started playing for a whole bunch of different countries including China and Taiwan obviously OJ Mayo had the talent to play in the NBA the best league in the world so when he went over to China and Taiwan and all these other teams he obviously absolutely balled out and is currently still playing in China and he's absolutely balling out OJ Mayo Mayo is currently averaging 20.5 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, and 3.1 assists per game over in China and is playing great for them. OJ Mayo is obviously playing really well in China and seems to like it over there in China which is good for him but at this point it doesn't seem too likely that he's going to come back to the NBA. Maybe he doesn't even want to come back anyway but it just I don't think he's going to come back. There's been plenty of guys that start a career in China after they're done with their NBA careers. Most notably Stefan Marbury who had a great NBA career and also had a great career in China and is loved, absolutely loved by the fans. Even he has a statue in China. But I really did like OJ Mayo as a player. He was just a great scorer. And just for his sake, I hope he has a good career in China and finishes off good. It's just pretty sad to see a guy like OJ Mayo who had all the talent in the world just not pan out and not able to put everything together. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think OJ Mayo can possibly get back to the NBA? I don't really think so. But do you think that? Or do you think he's just not going to get back to the NBA? But hopefully he'll find a great career in China and just find a home there anyways guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out a lot until the next time peace out guys